Uh, hi everyone, I'm just waiting for Miss Eve West to join us from Western Australia, so just bear with us. Of course, you know what it's like over there. They're a little bit behind, a bit more laid back. She'll be here any minute. As soon as she joins, I'll uh, invite her in and um, we'll, we'll get cracking. I hope you're good, so just bear with us, okay? Okay, look, hopefully Eve's about to join us live from Perth. I'm here. I'm here. I'm here. I'm here. I'm here. I can't believe I'm, I'm here. to do this two days in a row. <laughs> <laughs> Crazy. Look at us go. How times have changed. I'm quite good with these now as well. I know. Crazy. How, you How doing? long are we going to leave before people have joined? Uh, you're in charge of that because that's way beyond my control. <laughs> can you see? Can you see all the people joining? Yeah, I can. Yeah, yeah. So, okay. Um, okay. Right. What should we do? So, um, I guess for me, right, the we the reason I decided that we do this, we've been doing some some YouTube uh, chats on Zoom and put them on our YouTube channel, and um, I thought we'd give it a, go a live one. So we're doing Instagram live. It is Mental Health Awareness Week, and that is something that um, is talked about, particularly with my age group. I am 20 years older than you, so <laughs> it, it is talked about in my age group. I know everyone my age says, oh, yeah, you know, funny I'd known back then, and there was n none of this was around when I was your age and all that kind of stuff. And a lot of celebrities and people that we look up to in the sporting world and things are always talking about mental health and how you must talk to someone it's really important um la, 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 la. and it is it is but real people like you and i and up and coming sports players no matter how you know whatever sport they do it might not be sport it might be art it might be you know oh goodness knows what just everyone has their own little issues and it's good for people yeah. to know that normal people like me and you and our watchers are all, all experiencing things and it's completely normal to experience yeah. thoughts, feelings um, and you, you go through stuff and it's how you deal with it or the people around you that help you to deal with it that you learn from yeah. and pass your experiences on then to other people. Like I'm sure <laughs> I've passed a few experiences on to you and now you're doing, yeah. you know, youngsters that you're, you're coaching youngsters in Australia now. So yeah, you know, yeah. Lots you're passing all those words of wisdom on to them and, and they'll do it and so on and so on. So I just thought we'd have a, yeah. a bit of a chat to talk about your, Definitely. your stuff that goes on in your head. You can share as yeah. much or as little <laughs> as you want to. Um, yeah. Hey, I might even share a little bit. Who knows if anyone watching oh. wants to ask questions. <laughs> <laughs> yeah i don't know if you want to get in my head <laughs> <laughs> i think, I think we've both got some uh, things going on right haven't we <laughs> we've had our fair share between us that's for sure that is for sure <laughs> it's important to, for everyone watching that me and eve have known each other quite some time um mm. uh, eve was was working with me and uh, when she was over here and we did spend yeah you know, she's like a little sister to me i suppose actually we call you our stepdaughter don't we 
You do now, yes. Yeah, yeah. yeah I adopted my little Dan's adopted daughter. <laughs> <laughs> but like, you know, we went way back before you were like trying to play for Welsh Masters and yeah. also I was trying to try to play for England and <laughs> <laughs> then was too old at the age of 16. <laughs> Well, no. Has, had you gone to a different school, it would have been a different, maybe a different matter. So, yeah. it's it's all... part of it, though, isn't it? All mental health stuff. Oh, Phoebe's just joined. Hi, Phoebe's. Hey, Phoebe's. Phoebe's, I promise I'll reply to your message later. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm like. <laughs> she won't reply, Phoebe. She won't reply. Um, I guess also just quickly before we move on, anything that we talk about um, and you know, anyone's got any questions, I will, when this goes live, I will put links to helplines, chat lines, you know, if you want to reach out to anyone, there'll be information on this post if you do want to reach out to anyone, anyone about anything. And obviously me and Eva here, you yes. know, if you want to talk to us, you can talk to us, it's not an issue. I think most people... I'm not replying, but... <laughs> You're not what? I said I'm not the best at replying, but I'll get there at some point. Send her a message and it'll be... You know, a year later, she'll give you an answer. No, I'm joking. For important things, she might do you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but yeah, like, obviously with this chat, if whoever is watching and um, has any kind of conv um, any kind of questions and whatever, I think we're both pretty open when it comes to quite a lot of stuff. And I know for a fact I'm willing to answer any single question. And yeah. Cool. It all helps. So, yeah. Have a chit chat send questions in if you want to if not i'm just gonna i'm gonna quiz eve on a few things i know most of this stuff but i'm gonna yeah, quiz you... and, and get her to open up um and eve okay you to do the same with me if you want to quiz me on anything yep and make me feel nice yes. and comfortable then you go ahead <laughs> <laughs> <Ooh. laughs> cool okay um so i i, I have known you from uh, being young teenager and now you're yeah you know, a lot a lot older you're very old no you're not that old so what are you now 23 or still 22 22 22 you're 22. almost 23 aren't you in november yeah yeah, yeah that's almost that's like a couple of months ago <laughs> almost <laughs> <laughs> that's like me saying i'm almost 50 i've got another almost half years to go but i'm almost 50 so you know wow, that's, that's that. not long right <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> One of the things that struck me um, when I sort of first met you, and definitely when we started to hang out a lot more, we changed clubs. We were playing in um, a good club in Bristol, Bristol Firebrands. Uh, we spent a lot more time together because I had to drive you everywhere because you were so young. You had to get there. I yep. to, like literally, you spent, yeah. Thanks for that. Appreciate it. And now you're such a good driver from watching me drive. Honestly, everybody loves my driving. It's actually taught me well because here in Australia, they drive exactly like you and I drive. <laughs> so. <laughs> that's, not, that's not really mental health, is it either? But hey, there you go. So um, True. <laughs> you, I think so from a young age, I think you've had a lot to deal with. And it, it really mm. struck a chord with me at how mature you were. You know, you were like, probably, we started chatting a lot by the time you were sort of 15, 16. Yeah, yeah. And I was 15, really, 16. really absolutely amazed at how, how mature you were and what you'd already been through such a lot. Like, yeah. I don't know, do you want to tell people about your early childhood? Um, so mum and dad broke up when I was in year four. Um, so obviously it's kind of an age where you don't really know what's going on, but at the same time, like, you do. Obviously, I knew that dad had gone. I knew that there were arguments. But at the same time, like, I didn't know why. Um, and I actually didn't really know why until maybe a year ago was actually when I found out. Um, but I won't go into that. But, yeah, it was pretty hard. And obviously, being such a daddy's little girl and yeah. then not being able to see him until maybe every other weekend was pretty hard. Um, but I always just kind of had this thing of life is what it is and you just yeah. crack on, just carry on going and, you know, it's okay. I had a great time whenever I did see dad and yeah. it was good. Um, and then obviously, as you know, and quite a few people know, I've had a few things with oh, making me shake now, Rach. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> um, 
Yeah, we're like this, okay? I feel like this is probably how this is going to go, but I'll try and hold it together. Okay. Um, but, yeah, and, um, obviously my brother, um, we've had quite a lot go on with him, yeah. um, kind of drug scenes and stuff, and it's kind of on the back end of things now. But that was kind of in my life since I was about eight years old, and that was really, really hard. Um, yeah. Seeing a lot of things at the age of eight that you shouldn't really be seeing. <laughs> Um, and it was funny because I've always been this like um, quiet, shy kind of girl. I'm not now though. I've actually, I'm a very different person now since being out here. <laughs> yeah. Matured and grown a lot more confidence. But people would always be shocked when I knew about all these kinds of things. And, like, and then I'd be like, oh yeah, like it's just kind of normal day-to-day -day life that I have to deal with and have to see and know about. Um, but it kinda, it's kind of shaped me now to have an opinion and be strong and you know it's a lot of stuff I don't want to do and I've seen how it's affected my mum and my, my family and stuff and yeah. yeah like that's definitely something that's had to make me grow up a lot and it's, it's definitely deep down as you can tell from the fact that my voice is shaking but yeah yeah it's it's in there like it's it's here in my head like it's it's here forever but things yeah. don't ever leave you like no childhood traumas will never leave you and I think yeah like it's good that you can talk about that and I've always told you to talk about things because if you bottle yeah. them up it will um it will come out at some point there is it, that's it simple as that it will come out at yeah. some point uh, at whatever time in your life so it is really really good to try and talk about those things with somebody it doesn't matter who it is but just with someone um yeah we've always chatted a lot haven't we yeah lots you always have this thing of knowing when I'm not quite okay, and I'll just be like, oh, I'm okay. And you're like, mate, no, you're not. Like, <laughs> what's going on? And then I'll have like a meltdown or something, and then we'll be all good until the next time. <laughs> Can I give you some of my vice versa. wisdom? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And that, that is probably quite relative to lots of people watching. Like, it is quite common these days for parents to get divorced, and children yeah. are just, just have to deal with it. I'm really lucky. I never experienced that, um, and I'm mm -hmm. very, very thankful to to ha to have you know two parents that are still happily married now. Um, yeah. But you know, I haven't probably had my own stuff when I was a child, and obviously my sexuality when I was young is very different to people <laughs> with sexualities nowadays. So that's a big thing for lots of people to to deal with. But we can talk about that later if you want. Yeah. So, what else has happened to you, Eve? Um, what else have you been through that really... I kind of had a big chunk, had a big chunk of not too much going on. <laughs> um, kind of just cruised cruise through, cruise through school. So that, luckily for me, wasn't too bad. Like, you know, I had a little bit of bullying going on because I was a bit chubby, a bit fat, mostly because Dad used to spoil me with Mackie D's and... Um, <laughs> Sweets some chocolates. Every time I saw him, he'd just be like, yeah, go, go, is this what you want? Cool, great. Um, and then that took a pretty big hit on me how when you, I was maybe... Can I just ask Sorry? you how you dealt with being chubby? Because, like, I'm obviously a bit chubby now through, you know, getting older, <laughs> <laughs> getting older being the wrong side of 40. Uh, <laughs> for three quite, well, four serious operations since I stopped playing <laughs> hockey... Yeah. Um, the birth of my son, although I didn't actually give birth to my son, but I do use that now <laughs> and then. If people think I did, that's fine. Not got a problem with it. But for me not <laughs> exercising, I now am fairly chubby. And I, do you know what? I can't stand it. I'm not, I'm not going to lie. Yeah. I hate it. I hate it. I'm trying <laughs> so hard to get back into shape, but my God. And I, mm. I'm a qualified strength and conditioning coach. <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> um, like obviously the way I combated it was by being like this isn't cool this isn't fun and then like I actually just loved exercising and no matter you know I went to a state school like it was nothing special um, and like we didn't really play sport and I loved it and stuff so then I kind of was like okay well I like sport I like being active and then maybe a little bit over the top for someone who 
wasn't fit or anything, I started to run 10 miles three or four times a week. So <laughs> that Ooh. obviously soon made everything drop off of me. <laughs> did, you then um, get did you then get addicted to running? Yes. yes. In your head, because uh, I've been through this as well, my old yes. personal trainer, before I became a personal trainer, would tell you this, yeah. but I got just, I had to go and exercise, had to, had to, had to. And that's, yeah. a whole, that's quite a... That's a, a different ball game, but that's part of mental health. Like you, you see, you probably look at me and go, "Yeah, you've put on a few pounds," but you know what? You're right for your age. Don't worry about it. Me, I look at myself and I'm like, I'm in a fat suit. You know, I'm like a, in one of them. Do you remember those sumo suits I had? Yes. <laughs> I'm like that when I look in the mirror. It's all all about this, isn't it? All about this. Uh, yeah. Carry on. Um, yeah, I actually, I don't think like to begin with, it was pretty obsessive, and then just because I was like, I have to lose weight, like, this kind of sucks. Um, and then I was like, I actually enjoy this. Um, so I actually really did just used to enjoy getting out, like, getting out of the house, because, I don't know, like, as a normal teenager, I didn't really get on with mum very well. So that's yeah. kind of normal. But it would get to the point where, like, mum and I would literally just be screaming at each other. Like, it was horrible. And then I could just go out and run. And like I'd take my dogs with me, um, probably wouldn't run 10 miles with my dogs, but you know. Um, yeah, and I actually loved it. So then I lost weight and then it was kind of cool. And then in sport, I was the one that like everyone wanted on their team, which was obviously really good. Yeah. Um, yeah, and then carried on, finished school, went to college. Nothing really too, too fancy happened there. Um, and then just like hockey and stuff, I guess with mental health, um, just how much of a disappointment it was being too old to join the England single system just because yeah. of rules and who you are and if you don't go to a private school and if you don't get, you know, if you don't go to a good club at a certain age and just that kind of stuff um, that actually took a pretty big toll on me and you will know this because I'm pretty sure the amount of times I'd cry when yeah. I would see because I'm like, what am I going to do? Like, what am I meant to do? It's all I want to do. Like, I'm obsessed. I want to play for England. I want to play. I'd be like, I know all the players. I know, like, everything about every single team. Like, I just want to play. And, like, it just wasn't going to happen as far as, like, you know, it hasn't happened. But, I'm, yeah. you know, I'm in a very good place with my hockey now. But it just never got to – it just wasn't going to happen. And because I was so, like, invested and so obsessed with it. Like, it sucked. It really, really sucked. Um, Do you think that's – But, yeah, just – there are bound to be other other girls, boys that age going through the same thing as you. They've just discovered they're really good at hockey, and they're not. They're yeah. not. They're not. Do you think the system over here is wrong? Yes. <gasps> I've been banished <laughs> from England hockey forever now. You do, yeah. Do you think there should be something out there for? I really do because it is hard and. From, you know, from my perspective, I remember, like, sending emails and sending messages and stuff, being like, hey, like, I really, really want to try out, and I, but I just would never, obviously would never get any replies. Yeah. Um, but, like, I was just willing to just have someone come and watch just one game. Yeah. Like, just go to a training session, just anything to do with, like, under-18s or something. Yeah. Just to, just to try, but I couldn't, and... Like it, it when at that point in time when like that's all I ever wanted to do, and my heart was absolutely set on it, and yeah, I was kind of planning everything I could possibly do. Um, yeah, it definitely sucked, and I think as well like when I started running and I was doing a lot of training with you as well. Yep. Um, it was kind of helping me just to be like, okay, this is possible. I can do this. Um, and like just then doing everything I possibly could in case the chance did come up mm -hmm. it was kind of like helping my brain, helping my head. Cause I was like, okay, well, like it isn't at the moment, but if it ever did, I'm so ready for this. And like, I'm, I could smash it if it's going to happen. So I think just like knowing you can't do something at a point, but if you can prepare yourself for, if it does come up, yeah. that helped me mentally because I was just ready. Like if it did come up, I was ready. Have you now thrown, I mean, obviously that messed with your head a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. And you're now in a, you're now in a pretty good place. So I'm just going to jump ahead a yep. little bit. 
Have you now thrown yeah. that passion of you wanting to play for your country into your coaching? Yeah, massively. Like I'm actually, because obviously I'm riddled with injuries as well and have been for a couple of years. So that as well has kind of just made me be like, okay, you know what? I hurt all the time. Probably I'm never going to stop hurting. Yeah. I can deal with that. Surgeries will fix me. Physio will help me. Um, but, you know, I'm probably never going to get to where I want to be. Um, nice. And, you know, nice. Playing ask you a quick question. Really I'll yeah. ask you a quick question. Um, obviously, you, you chatted about um, drugs and stuff with your brother, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. When you're dealing with pain and surgeries, what, how do you feel yeah. about pain meds? Um, well, I'm happy to take them, but uh -huh. my body actually doesn't accept them. My body doesn't like them. Yeah. I When I had my knee, so I had um, decompression in my patella tendon. Um, so basically my patella tendon was diseased, so it had to be a little bit taken out and like put back together. Um, um, I was on tramadol and I took it one or two days and I was so ill. I could <laughs> not take it. So in terms of myself, like it was great because I was completely spaced out and couldn't feel any pain. Yeah. But it screwed me up already after like two days. It screwed my entire body up. So um, I guess in that sense, like, it's not great because even that, you know, I'm already dealing with a knee that's broken <laughs> and now it's like causing me to have these other things. And obviously then it's, a, it's, it's an addictive um, painkiller, uh, which I guess anybody that's had anything to do with tramadol or any kind of post-surgery painkiller medicine stuff um, would also know what they're like. But for me, it didn't like it hasn't really affected me too much, and I don't really have too much to say about it because um, I haven't had much experience apart from that. Um, but I know of people that it's affected pretty pretty yeah. big, um, and yeah, I guess it's one of those things that has to be controlled because you know if doctors are just happy to keep chucking pain meds at you and you're just going to become dependent on them, yeah, it's not good. You know, it's as bad as anything else, I think. It certainly is. 100%. Yeah. 100%. Okay, cool. Yeah. So carry on with what you were saying. What were you saying? Something about your potential then. I don't know. That was bad. It's all good. That's bad. Let's move. It's all good. Both, both <laughs> Someone can tell. I have had horrendous <laughs> injuries. This really affected us yeah. quite a lot. I had both my yeah. shoulders repaired. Um, yeah. I've pushed myself. To the limit to try and play Wales Masters, like yeah. I'm glad I was going to ask about all of your injuries throughout because obviously you've played pretty high level juniors and yeah, coming up through the ranks, and you were like a child playing juniors really because you were pretty pretty up there. Yeah. And then you had a pretty big stint and of kind of not really being there, and then you came back and still had riddled with injuries. So like you know your side of it, how have injuries and stuff impacted you? How have injuries impacted me? Did you say? <laughs> wow. Obviously, I. Let's uh, let's go. Let's go tell everyone else. Christ. Um, I didn't <laughs> become injured until really late on. I was in pretty pretty injury free as a child, because yeah, I was you know a sporty child from really young. Every sport, you know, mm. it didn't matter what I did, I was good at it. Like, and I excelled yeah. in in certain sports hockey was one of them running cross country sprinting badminton i was very good at badminton actually i was <laughs> yeah i was also a really believe it or not i was a really really good ballet dancer yes i think you've told me this i have we've laughed about this for like yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm pretty sure i had to i had do have a photo that i could show you but i'm not going to show it on here but I will show it to you. Because <laughs> my dad, in, lo in lockdown, my dad is going through all our family albums and emailing photos. He's like taking photos of them, then putting them on his computer <laughs> and then and just emailing them to me. So technology doesn't run in the family, you can see. <laughs> no. um, Rach, we've just been requested for you to do a demonstration of some ballet. <laughs> of what? No. Of, of some ballet. Yeah, no. Thanks. I bet that was that Bobby. <laughs> Yeah. Yes. <laughs> I will try to dig up a family video. 
<laughs> there we go. There's a little bit, a little bit not now. Going on. Can't do it now, but at some point. But yeah, I was extremely good at ballet. For some, yeah. my mum was good at ballet, so that was the bit I got from my mum. <laughs> and then I had to make that choice because my dad would pick me up from my private ballet lessons and take me straight to hockey training. And my teacher would be like, "Oh, but your feet, your feet." So I had to make a decision of what I was going to do. So I chose, I did choose hockey. So there you go. But yeah. So I didn't get injured until I was quite old. I think that I tried to prove something to myself. Because I had a... Yes. I stopped playing at probably... I was probably 19, 20. So think back to this mm. year. You know, that was when I sort of found a different lifestyle shall we say um yeah and enjoyed that lifestyle and didn't want to play sport anymore i was like no not doing this i'm gonna go out and i'm gonna find myself a girlfriend um and do whatever i want to do so i mm. and then I, I blagged my way through life quite a lot as you know but i came good in the end yeah and um yeah definitely did do you know what <laughs> i did indeed you're right i think for me <laughs> It was actually meeting my wife that turned my life around because I think yes. I was on, was I with Jan when we met? I was, yeah, I was, yes. yeah. Yes. So I think that I was spiraling out of control big time. Like, I um, mean, you know, I was mm. what, 30, 30, 31, 32 when I met Jan? <laughs> God, That's, yeah, about that, was about 32 when I met Jan. Maybe 30 yeah. I'm not sure. Both me and Jan cannot remember when we met, like, honestly. But anyway, I was 100% spiralling. And I think that that was the best thing that ever happened to me was, was meeting my wife and realising that, you know, yeah, there, there was somebody that cared about me and wanted me for me, not for anything else and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. And it was yeah. Jan who, she didn't force me. She took me to the Olympics in 2012. And she said, you used to play with mm. you. You need to, to get a you know, a hobby, then that's where we met at Wick. Thank you, Clark. It was. Yep, thanks to Jane Clark, yep, Jenny thank, C. Thanks to JC. So, um, <laughs> yeah, it's all her fault, really. In fact, I owe mm. Jen quite a lot because if, and the Wickets, if they hadn't have been so nice when I joined and yeah. um, welcomed me in and they, they didn't put any pressure on me or anything, you know, and yeah. it's good led me back to the to the game to the love of the game then I probably wouldn't be doing what I'm doing if you think yeah. about it I mean that so yeah. meeting Jan for me was my turning point she was a person in my life that um sorted my mental problems out and has helped me ever since mm. like if I have a problem which I quite often do people don't realize that I have problems yeah everything <laughs> <aren't> perfect <laughs> yeah exactly people don't ask a lot of the rage which is quite a bit of a problem. Nobody um, ever asks me how I am, apart from D. D asks me how mm. I am. Because I think D knows a little bit more about me, like you do. But other than that, yeah. you know, and, and you, you, me and you are uh, very close, and then we both went through a bit of a trauma, which we'll talk about in a yes. bit. And, um, yes. and now we've, we've reconnected. So you know, you, you're one of yes. those people that will always ask me, what's going on and you'll tell you know you'll yeah. you know me quite well we spent a lot of time traveling around and coaching lots of kids and you'll know yeah. there's something not right whereas lots of people don't realize that I put a bit of a, a front on and yeah. I've had my own battles with various <laughs> things and yeah yeah Easy, isn't it? I think you and I are both pretty good at putting on a brave face yeah and people don't always realize what we've what we've got going on what we've got what we've had happen and stuff no. both of us so yeah. i've probably got a little bit from you then i reckon <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah i do always talk about the game face though don't i yes if you've got you yeah know, i think but from a coaching perspective if there's something going on then i'll use the journey in the car to sort myself out <laughs> and then put my game face on you know what happens in those cards stays in those cards and none of those <laughs> words ever leave. <laughs> oh, goodness. What is this? Yeah. 
Mouse hands. Yay! <laughs> Marianne Venom. Exactly. <laughs> we love you, Mouse. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I'm actually sad that Owsley is yet to, do, uh, yet to join. I know. I'm a bit disappointed Owsley's not joined. Never mind. No, it's not great. Not good, not good. Out Shame hard. on you, Owsley. Yeah, exactly. Anyway. If we had cake, we'd be here, though, no doubt. Oh, yeah. Cake. <laughs> I've just been told we have pie, but I don't think that would pie. How are you going to get that to Owsley? <laughs> Send it. Um, but yeah, I guess, like, carrying on from that, like, if people don't ask, you know, it's quite a big thing, I think, with mental health. But even friends, a lot of, a lot of friends, they'll ask you if you're okay. And the classic answer is, yeah, I'm all right. Or, yeah, I'm okay. And then it's like, oh, yeah, cool. Instead of really just taking that extra second to be like, no, you're not. Like, yeah. I know you and you're not your normal bubbly self or you're yes. not, you know, just those little things. I remember, so everyone that knows me knows that I worked with racehorses a lot back home because yeah. that's all I ever talk about. Um, <laughs> hockey and racehorses. <laughs> hockey horses, hockey horses. <laughs> Which Rach actually came and met one day. I did, yeah. <laughs> Have a nice photo of you one of the horses um but my boss after an event that I'm sure we're gonna talk about pretty soon which I will probably cry you work in the way um, that yeah we'll get in there getting there, get in so there. I'm getting there. um but yeah every every single morning that I would go in she would just be my boss Ollie she would just look at me and she'd be like how are you today and I'd be like yeah I'm okay and some days like yeah I'm not too bad and then other days like yeah I'm okay or I just wouldn't say anything and those days she would just be like Eve can you just come down to the house a minute and like she would just take me down you know the other girls would carry on seeing to the horses in the morning um she would just make me a cup of tea yeah you know we would just sit sometimes wouldn't even say anything or other times I would probably say a lot and you know I'd have something to rant about or I'd you know cry or whatever and but I think just taking those extra couple of minutes to just see if somebody is okay mm. and then actually just doing something because even just acknowledging sometimes if somebody isn't okay and then asking that the further questions like sometimes it's actually just what people need yeah like people sometimes not want to ask because they don't want to intrude or that you don't want to talk but sometimes like even if you just ask like are you sure? Like, I can see something's not up. Yeah. Uh, like, something's up, something's not okay. And then they might just say a little thing, and then that could be it. But just then knowing that, like, oh, okay, they actually are interested. I think, I think that um, I get quite, like, you know, on Facebook, you know, just posting and copying messages, you know, it's okay not to be not okay. I'm here if you listen. Yep. Do you know what? Are you really? Really? Because no one's ever yeah. asked me if I'm okay. You've had plenty of time. Yeah. Like, I've disappeared yeah. off the face of the planet, and the only people that really have contacted me in that time was probably you and Dee. I moved, yeah. Eve. I moved house. <laughs> oh. Do you know, no, people you, don't ask. Nobody knew. Nobody knows. Because nobody asked. Like, you know? But, like, yeah. So. It's, it's strange. Um, but then people, when you next see them, they'll be like, oh, how have you been doing? Yeah, it's pretty good. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, yeah, good. Yeah, yeah. And that's it. that's it. Instead of being like, hey, I noticed that like, I haven't heard much from you or I haven't seen much of you. Like, what's been going on? Like, what's actually been going on? outside your house. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I definitely think conversations, there's just such a stigma around not wanting to intrude and not, you know, just stuff like that. And it's like, I... actually, like, sometimes just do. Even if it's not, not too much. You can still just ask, like, Hey, I can. I know that there is something going on. I am um, my best friend in the world. Twenty plus years we've been best friends. She was best best lady at my wedding. My uh, best lady. Yeah. And uh, we lived together for a while, and then um, she disappeared off to Birmingham and new life. But I see her like I'll see her as often as I can now. It's different for me now that I've got a son because I can't just go yes. and visit. So we do try and stay in touch. But I could go months without actually speaking to her and then I'll make her and it's just the same um yeah but I will always know if there's something wrong with her I can always check exactly. I, I just get it and I'll more often than not I'll just like 
keep her in one room and I'll let her rave, move, leave the room and I'll be like, we're staying here until, until you tell me what's wrong. So there's definitely something wrong here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I think it's definitely when, like, you know, best friends have to play a part if something is going on because they're really just the people that, you know, or partners, best friends, they are the people that you can, they can really just dig and, like, you know, they're allowed. <laughs> they know you well. That's the you just post fraud and be like, hey, until you tell me what's going on, we're yeah. not leaving this right now. 100% agree with you. That's what's so yeah. good about sport and the car journeys and, you know, the camaraderie and all that kind of stuff. That is what's so good about yeah. sport. You really get to know the people that you're playing with and you, fo you, you form those bonds and friendships and, you know, you'll always be there for each other. Like, that's, I think that's really important i think in sport yeah and i think as well we see so many different sides of each other we do yeah like we'll be having a great time and like we'll win and we'll have a great time or we'll lose and losing <laughs> you know affects some people it might even just be like a normal game or you might just be playing like you know when i was playing for week twos like not you know not very high level and i'd come off the pitch and i'd be so angry so upset and it's like <laughs> People would be like, hey, Eve, this isn't England. I'm like, yeah, but to me, it is. I yeah. could have done better, or this happened and that yeah. happened, you know? It's just, yeah, stuff affects everyone so differently. And yeah. just like, it's okay. It's actually just okay. Just to like establish it, accept that, you know, I'm angry, I'm upset, I'm, you know, feeling more sad than normal today. And just, but it's okay. Tomorrow is another day. You can be how you feel today. Have you and then we'll go to sleep, we'll wake up. Yeah. Have you have you ever experienced where you do you know what you don't want to see anyone, you don't want to do anything, you just want to stay in your house, stay in your bed, watch rubbish on TV, immerse yourself yep. into the Kardashians or something like that, and just just switch off completely? Do you experience that a lot now, or have you done it in the past? Do you still do it? Uh, yeah, I have in the past. <laughs> I went through a pretty big phase. Um, so I still do. I still do, um, quite a lot, actually. Um, but then, like, I literally have this mantra in my head of, you know, I can be sad today. This is just how I feel. Yeah. And, like, this is how I feel. Nothing's really going to change it. Um, like, everyone will kind of say to me, that, like, hey, let's go do this, let's do that. And I'm like, nope. No, you're like, I'm, I'm sad. Like, I just, I'm staying I'm, home. I'm sad. Oh, I just need to watch. Just wanna be yeah, I just want to be how I am today. Yeah. Tomorrow, I'll be completely different. Do you know you what? Know? It's so important to tell people that that's okay. It's okay yeah. to stay in your bed for a day and to tell your parents you don't want to get out of bed and for them to just accept it. As long mm. as you're telling them why, you know? So, yeah. yeah. You know what? I don't feel good today. I'm staying in bed. I'm going to watch rubbish TV, eat rubbish food. But tomorrow, tomorrow I'm going to be okay. I'm going to wake up tomorrow with a big smile on my face and I'm going to be fine. And you know what? Exactly. Sometimes you don't. Sometimes you're like, okay, I'm staying in bed again. That's okay. Yeah. I think that if you're it, doing that day after day after <laughs> day, day, then you definitely need to talk to somebody about what's going on in your head and you need some help maybe. Yeah. But every now yeah. and then, a couple of days like that is fine. I do it. Mm. That is my biggest yeah. escape, watching rubbish TV, staying in bed. Like, I quite often will, because I've learned to deal with how my brain works, because I, yeah. I think sometimes I can work quite differently to other people. Mm. Um, I'll tell Jan, like, I'm not feeling good today up here. I don't feel good. I need to just stay in bed. I need to, I need your help. I need you to help me today. I need you to help me get through the day. Like, but yeah. I've learned to do that over time. Like, mm. before I would have probably spiraled out of control and gone and done something stupid. Yeah, and I think as well, having someone that understands it. Obviously, I have Bobby, yeah. and she's exactly the same. Like, <laughs> she's happy. She just had a shout out. <laughs> <laughs> um, exactly the same as how Jan would be to you. You tell her, "Hey, like, my head's not good today," yeah. and she's like, "Okay, so what do we? You know, what do you, we need to do? What do you want to do? Like, that's okay. What what should we do?" And like, do we need to just stay in all day? Do we want to just chill out? Do you want, what do you want to eat? Like, do you just want some crap to eat? Do you want me to get yeah. you some ice cream? Like, yeah. what? It was like, yeah, <laughs> that's what I want. Stay in bed and I want you to run around after me, get me ice cream and chocolate, and then I'll be okay. I just hug me all the time. When I, hit, <laughs> I think when I hit my, the, my lowest low, 
which was a good few years ago now and I'm very mm. I'm quite I'm quite well now in the head but when I hit my lowest low I think that I it was only then at probably the age of 40 41 42 maybe that I realized yeah. that a lot of my mental issues came actually came from my family from my parents mainly from my dad yeah and then since I wish I'd known that a long time ago I wish I'd spoken mm. I wish I'd sat and spoken to my parents a long, long time ago when I was growing up about mental health and what goes on in my head and how I feel on certain situations and how yeah. how, how do they react to certain situations. Because I never realised. I thought there's something really wrong with me. But actually, my dad experienced the same stuff as me. Yeah. And, and then his dad or his mum would have experienced. So it's probably quite a good yeah. Anybody listening to this, whether you're watching this after it's live, you know, if you are experiencing stuff, I, for me, the biggest thing would be to talk to your parents about it, no matter how old you are, because it's yeah. probably they've experienced the same sort of stuff. Not maybe not mm. quite not the same, but very similar. So you, yeah. yeah. I think as well, like at the end of the day, parents are pretty much usually the people who know you best. So. Yeah. If there's, you know, if there's something you need to talk to about them, they're usually pretty, pretty spot on with listening and just, I don't know, yeah, yeah. being like, hey, well, I know, you. like, you're going to be okay. Or like, yeah, you know, I, I'm half of you. So <laughs> I had the same traits or, you know, your dad or your mom or whatever had the same traits. Yeah, so. massively. So. Do you want to, yeah. do you want to talk about your sexuality, sexuality or not? Um, we can do. I only, um, say, I only say this because obviously, like, you know, I'm quite old now, so I'm like the old lady of yeah. this, whereas you are still quite yeah. young. Um, so there might be people experiencing stuff quite that you're that you've experienced. I don't know, like, so you might be able to help somebody with your, yeah, your story. I mean, for me, there actually isn't too much to talk about. Like, obviously, there is, but there isn't really too much of a story, yeah, yeah, because I guess. It's and it all just took me by surprise. Um, it actually, although people tell me now, oh, I didn't see, uh, you know, something. <laughs> like what, exactly what you said. But I'm like, you know what? Genuinely, it wasn't ever something that, for me, I was ever, like, aware of or whatever the good word is. It kind of just, something happened, and then I was like, oh, okay. Well, <laughs> okay. <laughs> And then met Bobby and then, yeah, kind of clicks, literally just got on so well and felt comfortable and was kind of just found my person. So, yeah, it's nice. Yeah. And I, like, I actually, I've only had one person who I've had a negative reaction from. Were you, um, surprised? Were you surprised at that? Yes and no. It was an older person. Um... Older but, than me? Yes. Yeah, that's yes. what I know. So probably 70s. Yeah, um, yeah, can be hard. So even though kind of an important person in my life, also doesn't really care because I don't have anything to do with them, haven't really for a while, just, yeah. you know, messages here and there. Um, but everybody else, I've literally had nothing, nothing bad at all. Grandparents, mum, like everybody, yeah. you know, friends. Friends were like all around it. Friends love her. Like, <laughs> I don't know if Brookie's still watching, but my friend Brookie and Bobby are literally better friends than I am with Brooke. So. <laughs> um, but yeah, I guess it's very different to when you were younger because there was more of a stigma, whereas now it's a little bit more normal, I guess, would be a good word to use or more accepted um, for it to just be a thing now, just to kind of be with whoever you want to be with. Yeah. I think. I think that's, that's just a good thing as well. I'm glad yeah. you're so happy. I'm that I haven't had to, but obviously there's still people out there that go through such bad experiences with their sexuality and, you know, telling parents and telling family and stuff. But... <laughs> It is definitely it is a tough me. one. It's a tough one for a lot of people. I, and yeah, right. What you know, I'm confident. I've always been confident ever since I was, yeah. you know, 
yeah, I don't remember not being confident. Um, yeah, I've always been a quite a confident person, so I've never really had a problem with it. It's always been like, yeah, well, if you don't like it, do one. Like, I don't, you know, that that's kind of been, been me, I suppose. Um, yeah. But lots of people struggle. I've seen lots of people struggle. And I know yeah. all I can do is just be there for them and, and try and um, be that person for them to talk to and to lean on. And But I'm, I'm so glad. Yeah. That, I mean, it's a huge, huge subject. That is huge, huge subject. So <laughs> I mean, just to touch briefly, you know, if, if you're having any problems with that and feelings and thoughts, then just, just chat to someone. There'll, there'll be numbers and things that you can talk mm. to, to people about. I think as well, like one of my biggest things was just friends because friends, you pretty much know how they're going to react. And like, if they react bad, then, you know, what's, what good are they really? And then that just goes to show that they actually aren't a good friend. And then majority of the time, you know, they'll be a great friend and then you, you're talking to someone. Yeah. And like, even if it's just like, hey, like I've just, you know, I've noticed, I don't know, that I've just had a bit more interest for someone or whatever. Okay, no biggie, like, what's going on, you know? When you were growing up, did you, were you, did we talk about this in school now or not? I don't know. I've got, uh, um, I've only got a th almost three-year-old, so. I've been out of school for a while. When I, yeah, when I know, you're closer um, to it than I am. <laughs> um, well, we, don't, we really didn't do anything to do with any kind of, sexual health or sex education we just didn't do anything i didn't do anything so i guess it would have kind of come under all of that sort of stuff yeah um so i guess no it wasn't nothing was covered and nothing was spoken about yeah. at school for me but I, obviously every school's different i don't know it's don't know. not a bad thing but anymore it's very can tell us. accepted it's so nice for me to see like it's really nice yeah. for me to see like back when you know when i was in school like it just wasn't talked about like and i i grew up with those feelings alone yeah, I didn't. I didn't mm. know. I thought there's. I didn't know what was going on. I had no idea what was going on. I figured it all out for <laughs> myself. You know, <laughs> like places to go myself. Like I did take my older brother yeah. with me. I'll never forget that. I have very fond <laughs> memories of my older brother. One of them yeah. was taking me out to a gay club when uh, I think I must have been like eighteen, nineteen. No, I think I might be younger than that. Oh, I don't know. I can't remember that. <laughs> Who knows? Long time ago, hey. Long time. Do you want to talk about <laughs> your most recent pickle? Um, pickle that coincides with my little pickle. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, I don't know how much I'll be able to talk about it. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I don't either. I don't talk about my experience really to anybody. Every time, mm. whew, every time Jan speaks <laughs> to me about it, I can't. I can't talk to her can't talk to anyone without yes. shedding tears uh, so I in, in my head I'm not ready to talk about it if that makes sense mm. and yeah. I don't know when I will be ready like I can't look at photos um and I do yeah I can't so I, I don't honestly don't know and when I'm ready I'll be ready and I'll I'll talk about it but I, I'm not sure that I can do you want me to tell everybody what happened um, Anna and Dan have just joined. We've just had a lot of, just lots of my friends have just joined, which is nice. Um, yeah. Um, Shall I lead into I it? I don't know. I'll lead in. Yes. Okay. So you can kind of talk about it and you can ask me some questions and it might take me. So a not, oh, God, two years ago now? Uh, yeah. So probably about two years ago. Um, I think it started with my trauma, um, <laughs> which is slightly different to yours. So, so I, I my my older brother was diagnosed with um, terminal cancer, melanoma. So, put your sunscreen on, people, and um, he got very ill very very quickly. But at the same time, when I was dealing with that, uh, I had a text or call in the middle of the night. I'm not really sure. It was my night because Eve's in Australia and, and it just said, yeah. it just, I mean, I've got chills talking about this and for, for young people to talk about this, it's really, you know, I can't put myself in your shoes and you can't put yourself in my shoes because it was so, so close together. 
and this was yeah. relative to so many people but the message I got from you at that point it just said my dad's died and I was just like what what's what so and I just had no I just didn't know what to do I mean I'm over the other side the side of the world and I'd always said to you when you left Australia, yeah. to Australia just I'll be there I'll get on a plane I'm you know whatever you need you know <laughs> I'm like one of your people you know you're, you're one of my I was like, no, no, don't you come here, I'm coming home. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. So it was all about you, all about you. And, um, yeah, so you, you came home. So do you want to talk a little bit about what happened? Um, yeah, I'll try. Um, so, yeah, I was, <laughs> I was still in Australia. Um, <laughs> um do you want to say what happened? <laughs> um, okay, so Eve, Eve's in the street is Bobby. Bobby, do you want to say it? Do you want to tell the story? <laughs> oh, you might know it a little differently than me. Um, obviously, I met Eve after her dad had passed. It was probably about eight months on. Yeah. So when I met her, she'd already gone through a lot of her grieving process. and. Yeah. One of the like first real conversations Eve and I had was about her dad and she just opened up to me um, more so about like how much of an amazing man that he was and how she just had to kind of keep cracking on with life and that was always her focus was on all the positives and that was something that um, I really admired about Eve from the get-go. Um, was that she really did just focus on the positives and she was so candid about talking about it. Um, but from, from what I know, it was really hard being in Australia. Mm -hmm. She hadn't seen her dad for how long? A year? 11, 10, 11 months. Yeah, 10, 11 months. So it just kind of would have made it that much harder being so far away and not having seen him for that long. And then all the news, meaning that she had to go and fly for a whole day just to get over to see her family and yeah. I couldn't even imagine being on an aeroplane in that emotional state so that would have been really hard in itself as well but he's pretty strong like if you see her now you wouldn't even imagine that it happened that recently <laughs> yeah so kind of compose a little bit so I was at a friend's farm here in Perth um and I just had this phone call um from my stepsister. To so go home because she'd had your mu your stepmom on the phone. Um, yeah. And um, they received terrible news that your dad had had a motorbike accident that morning on his way to work. Your dad was a, yeah. a really loved uh, man, touched a lot of people's lives. He was um, an ex-policeman, you know, the gun person, you know. Um, yeah, he did so Maybe. much stuff. Dealing with that yeah. news, just at twenty years old, really, because you were only probably twenty then. I think so. Yeah, I wasn't. Yeah, it wasn't very old. That's the news that nobody ever wants to have ever. It comes. Yeah. With no warning. There's no chance to say goodbyes. There's no chance to. Um make anything yeah. right that was wrong there's absolute there's nothing it's just one minute there and next minute they're gone so it's such a terrible terrible thing to deal with for anybody never, yeah. never mind somebody so young like yourself and in a different country you know yeah <laughs> so how your your sort of journey from then to where you are now is is incredible and i'm so so proud of you and um, <laughs> You know, it just goes to show anybody watching this or, you know, watching it at a later date, if you're dealing with a death in a family, you, you, time is a healer and that is what they say. And there is no measurement of when it could take six, no. months, 12 months, two years, three years for you. You'll never get over it. It'll always be with you. You'll always remember yeah. it, but it will get a little bit easier to remember. Yeah, I think as well, um, one of my biggest things was kind of just doing everything that I wanted to do. Yeah. Um, so I got home. Um, I literally didn't leave my bed. <laughs> I 
so long. I know. I know. Um, yeah. Um, and then I had the decision. I was given the option to go and see my dad. Um, and I was like, yep. Like, I want to go see him. And so many people told me no. Yeah. Because um, obviously a motorbike accident, there's not much protecting nope. you. Um, but in my head, I was like thinking of all these things that he could look like this, he could look like that, you know. And I was like, if I go and see him, I know how he is instead yeah. of imagining things. And people were just like, don't, like, don't go. Um, and I just, you know, I still, like, I had to, I had to go. So yep. I went to go and see dad. And for me, one of the best things I've done, because he yes. was fine. <laughs> um, and then I had another thing of um, people, I wanted to carry his coffin. And everyone told me no. <laughs> and I did. I know. I wanted to. <laughs> yeah, you were there. I was there. Um, yeah, I think a lot of it was just what I wanted to do. So I just ha I had to do it. Um, and it, it's all stuff that's, like, obviously I'm still like this, but it's yeah. all stuff that's helped. And so, you are going to be for yeah. a long time. Yeah, he was your dad. But Eve, I yeah. am so proud of how far you've come. <laughs> and it's so important. We are going to run out of time, unfortunately. <laughs> but it is so important. Yeah. Anyone who's watching who wants to ask questions, ask them. We, we are here to yeah. help. And when we post this as a, as a post on Instagram, there will be links to people that you can talk to. Um, yes, perhaps, the biggest the... thing is, yeah, sorry, Rach, just quickly. I think one of the biggest things is just remembering that, like, life goes Fine. on. Like, <laughs> nothing, nothing stops. You can't just stop. Like, you have to carry on. So.